If you are working on a newer car and are checking signal from sensors such as a throttle position or mass airflow, you might find that instead of a, a usual analog 0 to 5 volt signal or a frequency encoded signal, you see a digital signal like this with uh, lots of transitions up and down almost like a pulse width modulation on steroids. If that's the case, what you might be seeing is a SENT protocol, also called SAE J2716. This is a way digital sensors are communicating with the car computer. One way to recognize that it's a SENT protocol uh, is to look for uh, a beginning pulse that is typically around 170 microseconds. After that, there is a train of pulses, uh, typically around 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then there is a pause, and then next packet begins, and so on. Uh, on this picture, we have 6 packets being sent over the line. Let's zoom in on the first one. Here we zoomed in on the first packet uh, in that transmission. The car computer is specifically looking for the falling edges in these pulses. So the first pulse is called a calibration pulse. This is uh, something that the car computer uses to determine the frequency at which the sensor is transmitting the data. And then uh, the data trans is transmitted in 4-bit chunks that are called nibbles. Remember that 8 bits is a byte and 4 bits thus is a nibble. Get it? Um, and so the first nibble is a s gives the status of a sensor and then there is a 24-bit data transmitted in 4-bit chunks, so there will be 6 chunks in total 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then the last nibble is called the CRC Cyclic Redundancy Code nibble and this nibble allows to validate the transmitted data it, it is used for error checking and discarding the data that is not correct. After that there is a pause and here we see the start of the next packet. But don't take the, my word for this because in the oscilloscope we can actually decode this data by invoking the send fast decoding on channel A. We are going to use the tick time 3 microseconds and we will assume that the sensor type is a dual throttle position. It's 24 bit data. Here is split as 12 plus 12 bits. There are other options de depending on what kind of sensor you are trying to test. So let's click OK and see what happens. So let's take a look at uh, this uh, decoded data. So what do we have? We have packet number one. It decoded that the calibration pulse is 167 microseconds. It's supposed to be 56, exactly 56 of clock ticks. And from that it determines that the clock tick is around 3 microseconds. The first nibble is giving us number 9. It's in hex hexadecimal format. So we need to go and check what it is. Every 4-bit number can be represented as a decimal number from 0 to 15 but it also can be written hexadecimal from 0 to 9 and then A, B, C, D, E, F. And so these are the 
numbers that we are going to see in the picoscope decoding. So we will see 0, 9, 0, 0, 1, E, F, F, and the last nibble is a checksum, the CRC code that is validating the transmitted data. And we see in the last line recommended checksum pass OK. It means that the checksum check passed and everything is alright with this data. A little bit about how I uh, got this uh, uh, pattern in the picoscope. Well, I have an Arduino Uno uh, program to produce send type signals uh, and the data that you see here is corresponding to the uh, packets that are displayed in a Wikipedia article for the send protocol. So you will see exactly the same transmission over here. How the setup looks like is just an Arduino Uno with a pin number 2 connected through a resistor 300 ohm to the channel A of the picoscope. Everything is very simple. Uh, how the Arduino Uno is capable of transmitting this signal? It's probably a subject for a future video. One thing you might notice in this uh, waveform is that the digital pulse is not very uh, sharp with uh, these edges being somewhat rounded off. And this is not a problem. This is actually intentional uh, because it allows uh, to transmit data without over longer distances without causing issues such as ringing and reflections in the transmission line, thus increasing reliability of transmission. Everything in the SEND protocol is about reliability. And uh, this is also one of the features. So if you see the rounded edges in your waveform, don't be too alarmed. The protocol is pretty insensitive to that. In fact, we can test how reliable and robust this is. What we are going to do is we are going to put a 10 nanofarad capacitor in between the signal line and the ground and see what happens. So you can see in this uh, picture I put a capacitor in here. It's not very well visible but it is a 10 nanofarad capacitor. Let's see what the wave uh, pattern is. So I have it saved here. And here we go. It's quite distorted by this capacitor. But the important thing is the falling edge. It's almost the same timing. And thus the picoscope has no problems with deciphering it the same way as with the pure digital square wave signal. The checksum passes, the data is still the same, there are no problems. This proves that this transmission line can handle a lot of distortion and still transmit the data correctly. We can also see what happens if we try to transmit this data over long or longish distances. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out that capacitor 
and then add the 100 feet, approximately 30 meters, of a wire and then connect it, the oscilloscope to the end of the wire. Let's see what the signal is. And what we see is we still are able to decipher the data correctly, the checksum passes, but there is a ringing. Each transition we have a lot of ringing. Uh, let's uh, try to zoom in on this. Very nice. But that's not good for the signal quality because if this gets too high then it can be counted as a falling edge and this will ruin the transmission so you want to avoid that and one way to do that is to use rounded uh, falling and rising edges just like we've discussed before and it does help for example if we still have this set up but then we'll insert that capacitor back in we are going to get the following waveform it's almost exactly the same as if we didn't have the 30 meters of wire so the some capacitance that makes the edges rounded gets rid of the ringing completely and we are still able to uh, get the timing right in order to decipher the packet correctly so this proves that the features to make the transmission reliable in the send protocol are actually working. It is fairly immune to floating clock frequency of the sensor because the uh, clock frequency of the sensor can change depending on how hot the sensor is and it's almost immune to that because of this calibration pulse. Timing of the falling edges doesn't change much with capacitance in the line and so this means that the capacitance in the line is not going to ruin the transmission so it's immune to that as well and if there is a really a lot of noise and some bits are going to be flipped up and down most likely the checksum pass is not going to happen and there will be a cross in this checksum uh, value saying that we have to reject that particular packet and wait for another one from the sensor cool isn't it so if you are diagnosing a system that involves such sensors don't be strangers just look for this pattern look for the calibration pulse and the nibbles uh, you can always try to use uh, your oscilloscope to decode this signal and especially check the checksum make sure that it passes and if everything is good make sure that this signal is reaching the car computer however there is uh, a potential problem for some sensors uh, in, in the, the some sensors do not regularly transmit the data instead they are waiting for the car computer to pull the line low for several microseconds and only then they will start doing the transmission of some packets and that could be problematic to diagnose because you might not even know if that's what the sensor expects the car computer to do 
the sensor might be silent not because it's bad but just because there is no trigger signal f coming from the car computer pulling the line low for several microseconds for example to tell the sensor that it needs to give out the data I really don't have recipes in this situation you really have to know that the sensor expects such a signal and then look for it from the car computer unfortunately uh, some sensors w are looking for such signal and some are not they are transmitting the signal at regular intervals well this is it for now uh, if you enjoyed this video and found that this content useful uh, spread the word maybe it will help other diagnosticians to properly diagnose newer cars.